This is Mission Leak Code, Problem 38, Count and Say. Here's what the problem says. The count and say sequence is a sequence of digit strings defined as follows. Count and say of 1 is 1. Count and say of n is just the run length encoding of count and say of n minus 1. In simple terms, we start with 1, and each new string we build is just us saying out loud what we see in the previous one. Think of it like calling out troops during a formation review. 1-1 one, one becomes 11, 2 ones becomes 21, 1-2-1-1 one, one, one becomes 1-12-11. Take this example. Input n equals 4, output 1-12-11. Because count and say of 1 is 1. Then we see 1-1-11. One, one, then we see 2 ones 21. Then we see 1-2-1-1-1-12-11. One, 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 Each term is built by describing the previous one. That's it. This is a classic example of run length encoding, or RLE. It's like how titans are classified based on the number of limbs or abilities. Here, digits are classified by how many times they repeat consecutively. We see a pattern of digits, and we say how many times each one appears in a row. It's not about arithmetic, it's about observation. We don't add or subtract, we just look, count, and say. Let's begin with our first approach, the iterative one. We start from the very beginning, the simplest known form of the titan, just a plain one. And then, with every iteration, we stop and observe. We ask ourselves, what did the previous number say? That's the key idea. We don't change it. We don't analyze it. We simply listen to what it said and build the next version based on that. This is what we call an iterative process, where we start from the first known form and loop forward, step by step, constructing the next form from the previous one. Now let's move into the code and see how this observation-based evolution actually works. Let's take a simple example, n equals 4. Start with 1. This is our first form, our starting point. Now we loop and build the next forms one by one. Step 1, looking at 1, we see 1, 1, so we say it, 11. Step 2, looking at 11, we see two ones, so we say it, 21. Step 3, looking at 21, we see 1, 2, then 1, 1, so we say it, 1, 12, 1, 11. That's it. For n equals 4, our final answer is 12, 11. Every form is just a description of the previous, nothing more, nothing less. We're not changing digits, we're just saying what we saw. Let's talk performance. This approach doesn't rely on function calls or stacks. It's a simple, clean loop-based process. But the strings? Oh, they grow, and they grow fast. Each new form can nearly double in length compared to the one before. So while it's easy to implement, the scale grows exponentially. Here's what that means. Big O time complexity, big O of two to the power of N. Each new term can be almost twice the size of the last one, and we read every character. Big O space complexity, big O of two to the power of N. We build and store each term one at a time and their size grows exponentially. This is efficient for small N, but go too far and the string becomes massive. We're talking colossal Titan level massive. And now we move on to a different approach, a cleaner one, like the passing of Titan powers from one generation to the next. We start at N equals one, which directly gives us the value one. Simple, right? Then, for any other n, we don't need to build everything from scratch. Instead, we call the function for n minus 1, describe what we get, and build on it. This is how recursion works. Each level builds upon the one below it. It's like a chain of titans, each one passing on the power to the next. Let's look at how this works in code. Here's the recursive approach in action. First, we handle our base case. If n is 1, we return 1. That's the foundation, the first titan. Then, for any other n, we call the function recursively for n minus 1. We look at what comes before and we build on it. Now, let's walk through how we count and say in the recursive function. We start by initializing a variable to keep track of the count. As we look through the previous term, we count consecutive digits. When we find a group of identical digits, we say how many there are and what that digit is. We do this until we've described the entire string. Now, let's take a deeper look at the steps for n equals 4. Start with 1. This is our base case, and it's already 1. Then we call the function for n equals 3. We look at the previous term, 1. We see 1, 1, and say 11. For n equals 2, we call for n equals 1, and again we get 1. We look at 1, say 1, 1, which becomes 11. 
Finally, for n equals 4, we call the function for n equals 3, and we end up with 21. Looking at 21, we see 1, 2, and 1, 1, so we say 1, 12, 11. That's it. The recursive process describes each term based on the one before it, building the sequence step by step. Let's talk about the performance of this approach. It still has the same big O time complexity as before, big O of 2 to the power of n. Each new string can almost double in size with each step. But with recursion, we also need to think about the space we use. Because we're calling the function multiple times, each recursive call adds to the stack. So we have a bit more space complexity, big O of n times 2 to the power of n. It's beautiful in its simplicity, though. Recursion is like the ODM gear of programming, powerful, elegant, but sometimes a little tricky to manage. Now let's connect this to the real world. Run length encoding is used in various applications like image compression, signal encoding, and even genetic data storage. It's like Aaron's Titan memories, repetitive sequences encoded to be passed forward, each memory building on the last. You've now mastered how to count and say. Try solving it for larger values of n, or challenge yourself. Can you print all the terms up to n equals 10? If you have any questions, solutions, or just want to scream Tadakai in the comments, leave them below. And make sure to subscribe for more Leak Code missions, AOT style. This is only the beginning. The next mission waits. More sequences, more transformations. Until then, Tadakai.